We're here at Flight City Simulation Centre in Jandicott, Western Australia, in, in, at the only Boeing 777 simulator in Australia. We're here to replicate what is aviation's greatest mystery, what happened to MH370. This has baffled the world. Everybody is perplexed, everybody is transfixed at how come you can fly on one of the world's best airlines, Malaysian Airlines, on one of the world's best aeroplanes, the Boeing 777, on an overnight flight, a routine flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing, yet you end up in the southern Indian Ocean in one of the most remote, wildest parts of the world. We're going to fly that flight and just see what happened and how it could have happened. We're now sitting on runway 14 left at Kuala Lumpur International Airport. Uh, we have our altitude set for 35,000 feet. Our heading is 146. Uh, and we're all set to go. We've got tower clearance for takeoff. We're now going to apply throttles. Um, brakes. Yep. And brakes are off and we are rolling. It's 1.07 a.m. in the morning over the South China Sea. I just simply press that button, the ACARS is disconnected. It's 1.21 uh, a.m. in the morning. I turn this switch, the transponder is turned off. If the co-pilot went out to have a break and I wanted to deny him entry back into the cockpit, all I have to do is switch this switch here to deny. We're flying at 35,000 feet. We're about 40 minutes into this flight of MH370. We're approaching a waypoint called Bito, which, which was the last waypoint this aeroplane passed. We're cruising on a heading of 054 on our flight track to Beijing. Our speed is 292 knots. Altitude is 35,000 feet. Now what we understand happened next was somebody turned this heading switch around to 280 and all they did was press that Here we go. and now you see us turn we are now in a slow turn which will take about a minute and a half and we're now flying west towards the Malaysian Peninsula a long way away from our destination of Beijing. This is our proper flight path over here as per the flight management computer but this is our new track over here the broken dotted magenta line is where we're going that's where we're supposed to go. I can now control everything about this aeroplane by simply using essentially this autopilot. I can select the heading, I can select our altitude and I simply need to apply throttle if I want to increase the altitude as well. It was reported that this aeroplane reached 45,000 feet according to Malaysian military radar. I'm going to try and do that. Uh, our captain doesn't believe we can get there and actually neither do I. But let's have a, let's have a try and see what happens. We're dialing up. In fact I can only dial up 43. We'll try 43. We press this button. You can hear the power of the engines come up, responding to this command, and we'll see what she does. At this stage, the next, next thing that was supposed to have happened was the plane then went in a descent, a sharp descent, down to 23 and then possibly down to 12,000 feet, which we're going to now try and do. I've now selected 12,000 feet, which is one of the altitudes that's reported by the Malaysian military. I've selected it, I've selected a vertical descent speed of 2,250 feet a minute and I've pulled the engines all the way back. So we're now we're just sort descending of over the Malaysian white. Peninsula. So we're now flying over the uh, Straits of Malacca. We understand that the aircraft turned northwest to the Andaman Sea. To do that, I simply dial up a heading of about 330 there, press engage, 
and away we roll off to the right. We understand the aeroplane flew up the Straits of Malacca for about 10 or 15 minutes at this particular heading to reach the southern Indian Ocean. Two things had to happen. First of all, the altitude had to go back up to 35,000 feet. Otherwise, the aeroplane would never have reached the southern Indian Ocean. We dial up 35,000 feet. We press engage. The heading, we need to go to 180 degrees. I turn this to 180 degrees. I engage. We are now climbing and we are now going south. We're flying at 35,000 feet. We're on a heading of 180. We have an indicated airspeed of 288 knots which translates into a ground speed of 488 knots which is approximately 900 kilometers an hour. The fuel on MH370 is about to run out. I'm disconnecting the fuel to the left engine. The power comes back on the left engine. Then probably within a minute or so the right engine quit as well. Right now the, the right engine is compensating for the fact that there's no power on the left. It's part of the 777 suite of avionics that it, in computerization that it immediately compensates. But then if that one quit as well, we're in trouble. And all of a sudden, warnings will start. And the number of warnings will start to increase. Our nose starts to rise. It should be just one degree or two degrees above the horizon. Now it's climbing. It's up to 8 degrees above the horizon, moving towards 10 degrees above the horizon. We're moving towards what's called a stall. That's an aerodynamic stall, not an engine stall, an aerodynamic stall. It means the wing is no longer going to lift us. The speed on the aeroplane is also decaying. It's reducing there, 186, 185, 184. This is a countdown to disaster. There's the stall warning. We are going down. And we're spinning. We are gyrating around the sky. This is this is this is awful. Our speed, our altitude is descent. We're going down. 23, 22, 21, 20. Our speed is only 140 knots. We're only seconds away from hitting the southern Indian Ocean. And we're about to hit the Indian Ocean. We have just replicated the flight, as we understand it, of MH370, given the information we have from the Malaysian military and the Malaysian government. What, what we found is the 777 is an extraordinary aeroplane, multiple backups, multiple safety systems, yet somehow or other all those safety systems and backups came to nothing in this particular flight. When it ran out of fuel we found several scenarios, a flat spin, a dive, stalls, all sorts of aerodynamic uh, variations. The outcome of course is tragic. It has been an extraordinary flight, an eerie flight, a chilling flight. One can't even begin to imagine what was going through the minds of the passengers. Mercifully they would have known nothing. We can't, un we can't even begin to imagine what was going through the minds of the people who may have perpetrated this particular tragedy. Uh, it's a very sobering, quiet cockpit we now sit in, contemplating what happened to 370.